As of mid-2019, Square Enix have kicked into full gear regarding media coverage for Final Fantasy VII Remake, leading right up until its newly announced release date of March 3rd, 2020. How's it going everyone? Taze in here. Today we're going to go over a lot of new information that has been revealed about Final Fantasy VII Remake, both during E3 and during a lot of media and interview coverages alongside and outside of it. Share my thoughts and then also hear a lot of your thoughts on it. So firstly, it's been revealed that Final Fantasy VII Remake's first part is releasing on March 3rd, 2020, and is only going to be going up until the escape from Midgar. However, Katase has confirmed that both this part and each volume will have the volume of content found in a full mainline Final Fantasy game. This is very interesting, it has me both excited and also a little cautious at the same time, that being because most, if not almost all of the Final Fantasy mainline games have had story content of around 40 to 60 hours or so, give or take depending on how you play, and then also additional content on top of that. However, Final Fantasy XV, the most recent mainline game in the series, was actually a quite a bit less than that of having content of around 20 to 40 hours for the story itself. This is obviously excluding additional content within the game, including the DLC for that too. However, because Final Fantasy XV was shorter in play length for the story, it could be quite a broader statement now saying that this part of Final Fantasy VII Remake will be equivalent to that of a mainline game. Meaning that this could maybe range from anywhere between 20 hours to 60 hours. So I'll wait and see how long the game actually takes to play once we get it. And then I'll sort of base my thoughts on it once I've actually gotten through the game. Now he has gone to partly elaborate why this part is so big in scale. And that is because they're incorporating both new story and originally cut story elements into this part of the game. So as part of it, it will also have depictions of the daily lives of citizens living in Midgard. And additionally, it's been created with this density and volume to set up the world setting and storyline of Final Fantasy VII. So listening to this and reading this, this actually does sound great because Midgar is one, a very large part that sets the beginning of the story for Final Fantasy VII. There's a lot of important things that go on in Midgar. However, this can be fleshed out so much more now in the remake. Now this part is also something that some people have related to the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That being the escape from Midgar and then having the whole world opened up to you is almost like the ending of the Fellowship of the Ring where Frodo and Sam then had the whole journey going up to Mount Doom. This has some similarities with it, especially going up to the Northern Crater by the end of it. And with the next story parts of the game after Mika having a lot more open world exploration, it could actually work out much better to have those games work in with more of the open world and exploring a lot more of the game through that. Now in saying that, I think that sort of open world essence to following parts, if they end up going that route, will actually work better with the next generation of consoles. And it's recently been mentioned by Square Enix's president, Yosuke Matsuda, that the remake parts are being built with both PS4 and next-gen hardware in mind. He said, I believe that our teams have made it so that the game will support both the next generation and the current generation of consoles. I believe it is being developed so that it is going to be playable on both. So I'm not really concerned about that and I believe that the fans are also going to be able to enjoy it on both, including the next generation of consoles. So this could be something that is broadly specifying to the Final Fantasy VII Remake as a whole. We could also be having some reference to this first part. We'll find out as time goes on regarding that. However, for future parts, if they're going to be having this huge sort of open world expansion the game, especially in comparison to Mika, it may work out a lot better with the future generation of hardware, maybe even compatibility with much higher capacity Blu-ray discs. However, in saying that, it is important to note that it has been confirmed that the first part of Final Fantasy VII Remake will all be contained over two Blu-ray discs. Now, Katase has mentioned that this approach allows us to remake the original without having to scale back on everything players love. And he's also gone on to highlight a lot of information about the technology and all the new creative techniques that are being used with this game, such as the way characters are animated, choreographed, and dialogued as well. This is a whole different aspect when we're comparing original polygon models in pre-rendered backgrounds to what is now both characters and environments that can be fleshed out so much more with today's technology. Now I'm very excited for this approach with Final Fantasy VII. They are going for a realistic style, but they're not going for photorealistic style. They want to keep some form of similar aesthetic element to the original, but it's really interesting because I think this game will be fantastic having a lot of the old story that was cut from the game put into it as well as a lot of new stuff. They can flesh out a lot of characters and again, if they're setting up the storyline of FF7 and even the world setting, 
Mika is a great place to do it because Mika is composed of a lot of different people that are living there that come from a lot of parts of the world, if not throughout the entire world of Gaia. So through interacting with the daily lives of citizens living there, you can learn a lot more about the world and even the history or so of Final Fantasy VII. I think that's great because that can give us a greater sense of understanding and interest in the world when we go out to explore it in the following parts of the game. Now, Katase has also mentioned that planning and outlining has started on part two, while part one is in its final full-scale phase of development before its March 3rd release date. This is interesting to hear, and he's also gone on to elaborate that he foresees more efficient development of the second part. Now, this is sort of interesting because this is backtracking off a previous interview of information where he said that it actually may still be the same development time. And then Square Enix came out sort of with this update now, more efficient could be taken in various ways. It could still be the same development length, but again, they may be having more success or be able to get more out of that development length. But at the same time, it's still sort of hard to wrap our heads around the entire development length of this game because there were some phases of this game that would have been developed outsourced at Cybernet Connect 2 and then it was switched to in-house. So in terms of taking all that into consideration, taking into consideration that they also have a lot of assets now, they have the whole development phase going into the second part now, being outlined a year before the release of the first part, we may end up seeing the second part four years from now or even three years from the release of the first game. But one bit has caught my attention that worries me a little bit and that is in an interview with Jason Schreier, an editor at Kotaku, apparently when questioned Katase on how many parts this will be, not only did he say that they're unable to reveal at that point in time, but it was partly because they're actually not sure themselves. Now this has got me a bit worried because we don't want this to also be in development for that long. That one, a lot of these people who are working on the game are going to be aging quite a lot throughout the time. We've already seen Nobuo Uematsu taking a break for health reasons. But also, you know, in regards to sort of some of the work that these people have on other games, like Tetsu Nomura being the main director of the Kingdom Hearts series, how is that going to push forward timeline wise if he's going to be the main director of the Final Fantasy VII Remake through, you know, how many more parts going on? Now, in saying that, because he said that they're not sure themselves, it doesn't mean that they don't have any form of planned outline and discussion. I think this is an integral part of pre-production and planning with any project. So it's most certain that they do have this stuff all laid out. They just haven't got anything specified as certainty or at least to be able to reveal to the public. Now, personally, I would love to it to be three parts now knowing that this first part is only Midgar, having the second part going up to including the Cetra Ruins, that being the end of disc one, and then having the third part going up to the end of the game in the Northern Crater. I think that would work out perfectly. Now finishing off with some information regarding the language and voice casting for this game, so I recently did a video going over all the voice casts that have been revealed for the game, being the voice actors and actresses for Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, Jesse, Biggs, Wedge and so on. So I won't elaborate more on that here, but it has been revealed that the game is being voice acted in English, Japanese, German and French, and it will have text and subtitles translated into English, French, Latin American Spanish, Brazilian Portuguese, Italian, German and Spanish subtitles. I think that is great to have such awesome localizations to cover a broad spectrum of people. Now, it's not confirmed that all these different options will be on the single disc for everyone in all regions. It's most likely going to have a lot of these in the European region and English included in the European region. So it's not sure how it will sort of work in the other regions. But Katase did say he's hopeful that the English game will have dual audio for Japanese and English. And given it's going to have German and French localizations too, it's also possible that we may also get them on the same disc too. Being bilingual in English and German, this now gives me three ways I could play the game. One through English, one through in German, and then one through in Japanese. So I'm super excited at this. But one really interesting bit of information regarding the voice casting for Final Fantasy VII Remake, specifically the new versus the previous voice cast for Final Fantasy VII compilation material, is that Maximilian Dude, who is a YouTuber who had press conference access to Final Fantasy VII Remake information in the demo at E3, learned some information from the developers of the game. And one thing that they pointed out to him that although new voice casts were revealed for this game, given this is the first time the original game is going to have voice casting, they wanted to create their own sort of tone and atmosphere to this game that is very faithful to it. 
However, apparently it seems from the information that they elaborate on to him is that these characters in other source materials outside of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, for example, as characters in Dissidia and so on, may still have the original voice actors portraying them, such as Steve Burton for Cloud and George Newbern for Sephiroth. So it's interesting to hear that we may still see these actors come back and reprise their roles for these characters in other mediums for Final Fantasy 7. And then finishing off, there's been a bit of a huge excitement but also controversy regarding the Collector's Edition, the first class soldier edition that has been announced for Final Fantasy 7 Remake. One, due to its huge price value and also due to its very limited stock, specifically in the Australian New Zealand region. However, it's now also been revealed by Square Enix that there are going to be extremely limited watches for Cloud and Sephiroth. They're currently going to be 77 made in each region by K Uno Artisans at Seiko Instruments in Japan. They're going to be valued or sold at 2,500 US dollars. This is this is beyond me. So that's all I'm going to say about that. If any of you are interested in that, well, you now know that this exists. But hard pass for me. Anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. Stay tuned for more news and information coming for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm going to do another video where I'm going to go over more specifically gameplay news and information, that being of gameplay reveals for Cloud, Barrett, Tifa, and just the overall aspects and new designs implemented into this action hybrid turn-based system, and even going over some of the details that were revealed for both the in-house demo, this is the one that was shown only to press, and then the floor demo that was accessible to people at E3. And through that, I can then elaborate more on new character designs that we've seen, such as with Tifa and Marlene. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts below. Let's get an awesome discussion. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And even if there are some things that I have even mentioned here, feel free to let me know and chat about that because they're always things that I can talk about in future videos. And also, hear your perspectives and see how that might shape my perspective on things slightly differently just by listening to it from your angle. It'll be very interesting to hear your thoughts and especially, you know, how this is Midgar only, how it's uncertain how many parts there'll be, at least to us as of yet. And yeah, just sort of your excitement for this game coming out so soon. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you'll enjoy it. And until next video, stay spot on.